the NTSB released some new video for us today that shows the point of impact on the actual ship, the Dolly, and the point where it impacted the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing the bridge collapse up there in Baltimore. We're going to be looking at that, and we're going to look at some other news about what some of the wives of the missing construction workers knew about them, as well as some previous trouble that the Dolly was having while it was at dock. She'd never have left the dock in the first place. So let's take a look at the video first. So as part of their inspection today, when they were aboard the ship, they were looking at the hazardous materials and downloading the vessel voyage data recorder. And you're going to see the video of them downloading it on the bridge. So here we are. Here on the right hand side, you can see that's where the pillars were that the ship originally struck. And so you can see the bumpers around it were actually in pretty good shape. And I wish they would show us some better video of it. Now he's taking pictures, he's leaning over the side of the bridge now, looking straight on down towards the the bow, trying to get some pictures. And I hope they publish those pictures because I want to see close-ups of it. So here we are, here's closer to the point of impact and directly in front of them, you can see where the roadway from the bridge has come crashing down. And, and that gray metal you see there is the actual truss of the bridge. So there's debris all over the place here. And I'm looking at these barrels and I'm thinking, uh-oh, what's in those? I hope there's nothing <laughs> nothing like plutonium or something. These guys are standing right in front of it. Now, fortunately, it looks like they didn't leak. I can't really tell from this vantage point. But they're photographing everything there. They're probably going to look up the numbers on them, too, uh, to see what has dangerous materials in them. And right in the background there, you can see that gray truss from the bridge. So there they're shooting, I saw one of them shooting a laser. They're either doing LIDAR or they're, tech, uh, they're doing a thermal scan as a possibility. Maybe they're doing some infrared, but you can see the laser dot. He had shined it right on the surface there. And they're testing something. I don't know if they're testing humidity. That could be a humidity meter. That looks like one that I use when I'm installing wood flooring and stuff like that. So either that or they're, they're sensing. It could be a sensor for gas leaks or something. And there's part of a, looks like it's a, a walkway of a deck or something that came separated due to the crash. It's really amazing that you can still walk around on this boat too and not really have any issues. Because when you think about how heavy that bridge was when it came collapsing down on top of it. So there's the, the truss there and the, more of these barrels and look that barrel is crushed but it doesn't look like it leaked that's pretty amazing there if it is i'm pretty lucky i mean we don't know what was in there could have been vegetable oil for all we know i know there was concern about were there lithium batteries or stuff like that on in any of the containers there was supposed to be somewhere around 58 or so containers that have hazardous materials in them They only show us a lot of kind of wasted video here that's not really giving us a lot of, of information. But here, they're going around the stacks of all of the containers, and they're getting pictures of them, and they see those numbers like that 1993 there? They'll look that up on the, what do they call it, the MSCS? I forget. It's those data sheets that tell you how dangerous the materials are inside there. It's very important for them to be able to identify it. And there they, is a shot they took looking down down one of the walkways and you can see a couple of fallen containers there. So now they're headed on upstairs, probably to the bridge at this point. And once they get on the bridge, we're going to see them pulling the data from the voyage data recorder. That's the equivalent, so to speak, of what they use on the airplanes. It, it doesn't give you as much data as you would get on the, on the cockpit flight recorders and stuff like that but it does have some kind of general basic data that is collected. And guess what? When the Dolly boat here lost its power, not all of the Voyage data recorder was operating. So once the power generator came on, I think then it kicked back on. So you, you may find a gap in the records when they're done. So here they're kind of looking in, I think probably towards the bow, and they want to see what sort of damage 
was done on the inside. Now, you know, when a boat hits something like a dock or something tough like concrete, usually uh, the metal of the boat absorbs the energy. And so usually there's a lot of internal damage inside the metal of the hull. And so now here they're looking at this liquid streaming down the, the wall there. What is that? It looks kind of gooey. Not doesn't look like something you want to step in, you know. You don't you don't want to turn into the toxic Avenger or become the next Marvel superhero or something like that, you know. An inhuman. So I'm assuming this is probably directly under the bow. And there's all of the damage that it incurred on the inside of it as it struck the the pillars. So as you can see, it was just a lot of devastation and mess on this boat. But it's amazing that the boat is actually still afloat after all of that. Because it could have easily taken on water and just sunk right there. And of course, they're showing us more and more of nothing here when I want to see close-up of the damaged areas. Again, more, more sort of uh, non-event video there. Now, the guys are probably going through communication logs right there or setting up to take the data out of the voice data recorder, which is located on the other side of the bridge. So we're going to see when they walk over to the console on the other side of the bridge how they're going to uh, get the data out of there. And you do it, you extract it out of the voyage data recorder with a thumbnail drive. Again, they're just showing much of nothing and when they could be showing us a lot more detail. So here they are now, they're walking over to the console and this console on the right is where it is. You'll see him plugging it in right there. And if you look closely when they zoom in, you should be able to see the little tag above it says something about, yeah, see, VDR operation alarm panel. So right there is where they're extracting this data out of the, the Voyage data recorder. This is the all-important data that everybody's been asking for. And they gave sort of a, a partial of what was in it, and I showed it to you on the video last night because they gave a few um, updates and bullet points of some of the key times that they were able to pull. And that's it for their video. And then let's go to the other stories I wanted to talk about here, the updates. And by the way, you might be surprised to learn that uh, these four pillars that were here at this connection, the sub major support for the bridge, if you look at the one that's coming up, it's, it's obscured by the truss right now, but it's right there, it's exposing almost in the center of the screen. You might be surprised to learn that these guys were hollow. They're not solid concrete. And you'll often see that in bridges. And then this news came out today, so I don't know if you saw this, but I thought I would include it for you. So this was very shocking and, and kind of saddening, I think. So uh, it says here, the wife of a Baltimore Bridge collapse survivor says workers were on break in their cars when the bridge came down. So what makes this kind of heartbreaking? It means that, you know, they, they probably didn't stand a chance. They, they may have been in there with the windows rolled up. And so when a vehicle plunges into the water and these guys were mostly uh, foreigners who don't really, you know, know the ways of our vehicles and what to do when you land in the water like that. Pretty much us Floridians know because we have canals all over the place, but and they likely just drowned in the vehicles or maybe they got crushed and knocked unconscious because they probably fell quite a distance there when the bridge collapsed and in one case they said that one of the vehicles the bridge had uh, sort of encased it underneath water some of the concrete roadway was had encased the vehicle that um, they might be trapped in so i don't know if they would have been any better off if they were outside their vehicles on the roadway but, you know, as you can see here, there's the yellow lights and there's where the vehicles were sitting when the Dolly ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge and the whole thing came collapsing down. So it just seemed to me like these guys just never had a chance. And we know the police were getting ready to go and, and drive up to tell them when the accident occurred because the, the cops basically had seconds just to get their cars in place to close the bridge to begin with. Yeah, if we can stop traffic, just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. Uh, I'm not sure where, uh, if there's a crew up there, we might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. 10-4, once the other unit gets here, I'll ride up on the bridge. I have all interlude 
And then this story broke too, which which is kind of really surprising. Um, so it says here that the cargo ship suffered severe electrical problems while docked in Baltimore days prior to the bridge collapse. And so what they were saying is that it had total loss of engine failure while it was at the port, according to a port worker. So the port worker had said here that the ship was anchored at the port for at least 48 hours prior to the deadly crash. And it also says, look at this, following the devastation, she said, in those two days, they were having serious power outages. They had a severe electrical problem. It was a total power failure, loss of engine, power, everything. So here seems to be what the problem they were having right here. Uh, she explained that refrigerated boxes tripped breakers on board the ship on several occasions and the mechanics had been trying to fix the issue. Now, I don't know what could have been the issue here. Did they have too many refrigerated boxes that were hooked up? I mean, let's face it, if you're tripping breakers, okay, that means you, you're drawing too many amps. And let me tell you something too about breakers. Yeah. Uh, many breakers will trip long before the rated amperage. Now I can tell you over the years where I've done numerous remodelings, I run into problems with electrical all the time. And you often see people that didn't know what they were doing, putting in breakers with the wrong amperage. And then another thing that happens too that people don't realize is that, you know, breakers can trip at 75% of the rated current. So for example, let's say you have a 20 amp breaker there up in your breaker panel. And those can trip at 17 amps. I've seen it happen. I've done a lot of electrical problem solving like that in the past. So maybe that was an issue here. Maybe they had too many refrigeration units that, that they were trying to hook up to the power and it was causing problems and making them all trip all the time. And if that's the case, it seems to me they like they didn't really solve the problem. Maybe they were playing some games. Maybe they tried to do load sharing and take, all right, if all of these are tripping one breaker, let's take some of them and unplug them and throw them onto another breaker. And so now you're, you're just moving the problem and spreading it out more, thinking you're lowering the load. And yeah, I mean, that makes the most sense, but you could still have problems with that. And then right here, this is the most damning statement where she says they shouldn't have let the ship leave port until they got it under control. So my question is, is did they have it under control or did they not have it under control at that point in time? So that's the, the thing, or maybe they thought they had it fixed and the issue was obviously still there. Well, I'm going to continue to monitor everything here for you on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. And in the meantime, you can check this video out right here, which is on the FIU bridge collapse. That was one of my best engineering videos yet. So thank you so much for tuning in again today and stay tuned for the next one. And we'll see you on that next one.